couldn't talk peacefully. They tried, and I was like, nigga, this is cool, we are. Super Crypto Blood, I want to introduce you guys to a new exchange, Bityard. They do cryptocurrency contracts. If you're like me, an active trader, you're probably sick of the market manipulations, forced liquidations, accurate Bitcoin reference rates over at Bityard with K-line weighted averages. No VPN hassle, available for U.S. citizens, and fully regulated in Singapore, Australia, Estonia, and the U.S. Profit losses are all in USD as well, and no fees with U.S. withdrawals. And most importantly, you can do deposits with fiat unlike bitmex you can't do that right so check out bityard.com i'll leave a link in the description below yes your boy crypto blood welcome to another episode of my two satoshis it is may 26 2020 shout out to my man one of the youtube members the tech geek for the song request today don't nobody want none by tech 9 816 stand up thanks for the song request brother and hope everyone's doing well today welcome to another episode Today we're going to be looking at a tweet I actually saw and then I found this article that talks about a potential leak uh, or exploit that can occur in Ledger and Trezor wallets. I want to go over this to give you guys a heads up. Um, these things aren't impossible. So, you know, just keep, you know, spreading your wallet amounts across multiple means of storage from hard wallets to paper wallets to if you can if you can brain wallets even if you can you know you have to be a little bit more uh savvy to do the brain wallet but that can be done as well so i want to take a look at well, what this exploit is uh, apparently allegedly out of crypto potato.com we'll take a look at that and also the digital yuan looks like it may be pushed back no surprise or shouldn't be at least we'll take a look at this article out of coin journal that talks about China having no timetable now for this digital yuan. I think it's still going to come out, but I'm going to be honest with you. The digital yuan in China, the CCP, they're stuck between a rock and a hard place, in my opinion, with a lot of things globally. I personally think they've actually taken 10 to 15 years uh, steps backwards when it comes to global relations because of this coronavirus. So we'll take a look at what's going on with this. It may have an effect on their launch of the digital yuan. And then lastly, uh, as if we need any more proof, maybe some of you do, early Bitcoin miner calls Craig Wright a fraud through his own addresses. So I don't know if you guys know about what's going on with all the uh, wallet addresses, Bitcoin wallets that he supposedly owns. He said this in court under, under oath in Florida that he owned this list of a thousand or more wallets and this is not the first time this has happened but one of those wallets was actually accessed and a transaction was signed with a note you can sign transactions uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain with any type of note to either verify that you own that particular wallet or whatnot well in the past and I covered this it happened where they said that Craig Wright was a fraud and it wasn't his address well now we have over 145 of those addresses signing a message saying that he is a fraud we're gonna take a look at the details this is crazy i'm not surprised though neither should you <laughs> to be honest with you so we're gonna take a look at all three of these articles coming up on this episode of my two satoshis but before we start if you guys find these types of videos informative make sure you like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this and again don't forget you can take advantage of that crypto.com zero percent credit card fee normally 3.5 percent that has been waived make sure you guys take advantage of that at crypto.com i'll leave a link in the description below because if you use that link in addition to the promo code CBLOOD, you will receive $50 worth of MCO tokens when you fund your account. I am loving Crypto.com and all the various benefits they have for their users from Earn to the debit card. A lot of stuff going on over there and they got new things every week it seems like. So use that link in the description below and get started today. But let's look at this heat map. We've got Bitcoin down half a percent to $8,843. ETH is also down just above the $200 handle though, $204.07. And EOS is down half percent to $2.50. We got Binance down 0.7% to $16.18. And also Litecoin down 1% to $42.38. Now the other day, two days ago to be exact, I put out this tweet. Bitcoin rejected at the trend line, down we go. And this was uh, something I was monitoring, we saw. 
some price action around that trend line it doesn't always follow it exactly but i was watching the price action as as we dropped back below that trend line and then we had the hard drop i knew at that point we were heading lower and that was at nine thousand forty one dollars i put that out on may 24th and of course i always gotta have people that are i don't know for whatever reason people think that because i'm telling them that bitcoin is going lower that i'm against bitcoin no that's the problem in this space there are too many people that say moon every freaking day. Every day you see a thumbnail, it's moon, Bitcoin, the 10,000, Bitcoin. All they're doing is clickbaiting you. They don't know anything, most of them. They're just clickbaiting you. They don't really trade. You need to listen to people that have changing opinions about the price of Bitcoin. Not necessarily the functionality of Bitcoin, its utility, but the price. Because Bitcoin works at $1, $5,000, $500 dollars a coin. It still serves the same purpose of transferring wealth, permissionless, cross-border remittance system. Used to be a payment system. And that's another discussion. Not, not so much anymore. But yeah, I had a guy that was, you know, talking about, I, I'm not going to show his account because I'm not trying to rag on him. But he says, basically said, it seems like you want it to happen. No, I don't want anything to happen. And my response to him was, I'm a trader. I don't quote unquote want anything. I react to what the markets tell me. I would suggest you be emotionless in this space. Bitcoin functions. The same whether it's eight and a half thousand dollars, three thousand, or a hundred thousand dollars, and that's how you should be as well. Don't get caught up in the emotions of this game as far as what the price of Bitcoin is to make your decisions. If you're an active trader, if not, stack sats every day, like my man Max Kaiser says. Don't get emotional, people. I don't want you to get emotional. So, what we can do now is draw trend lines to the downside now as we see a trend heading lower at this point i think think we're seeing some consolidation at the 8600 area but i think we possibly may go lower it's the 84 83 range 83 84 hundred dollar range that is in bitcoin I'm basing this off of coinbase but this is where we would see uh possible areas of resistance but to get a more near-term perspective on things we can draw an inner trend line downward trend line like that so what we want to see is a close above this trend line above 9,000. We can see it, you know, a day or so above that. Then we may see a breakout to the upside like that. Uh, if we can't break this, then we head lower first down here. Then maybe make a decision to break above uh, this inner trend line sometime in the future in the next couple of days. But first article we'll take a look at is the one about Trezor and the Ledger potential exploit as hackers claims. Uh, to offer wallet users personal data. So a hacker says it offers hard drive wallet users details as per screenshot posted on Twitter. The hacker offered to sell personal details of customers from a wide range of financial services platforms. This includes Treasure and Ledger, Keep Key, Bank to the Future, and Loan Base. The image below shows the hacker claiming that they got the details by exploiting security vulnerabilities on Shopify, the internet based commerce site. The hacker also targeted users of the popular Ethereum form, ethereum.org. This mirrored a similar attack on ethereum.org back in 2016 when the hacker managed to extract the personal information of 16,500 ETH form users. Both Trezor and Ledger though deny the claim. Trezor said that they actually don't use Shopify but that they would begin conducting investigations immediately. The official Trezor announcement stated there are rumors spreading that our eShop database has been hacked through a Shopify exploit. Our eShop does not use Shopify, but we are nonetheless investigating the situation. Likewise, Ledger team posted a similar message, noting that details offered by the attacker don't match up with their database. Regardless, they intended to investigate the claims with appropriate seriousness. All in all, the hacker was offering 200,000 user details from multiple websites and financial apps included are the three largest most well-known crypto hardware wallet websites the attacker claims to have the names addresses email addresses and phone numbers of the exposed users in question this means that if the hack is genuine the worst to come of it will likely be phishing schemes however knowing the home address of a ledger or treasure user could be a way to track down cryptocurrency users in general many of whom hold significant amounts of funds in their wallets so just be careful learn to uh, use and generate those paper wallets in addition to your hardware wallets i think having a mixture of them is good not having everything on or relying on one sole way to store your your wealth what if there's some huge exploit in the future 10 years down or something like that from a hardware perspective not even software a hardware exploit which we did see happen i think on either ledger or treasure i can't remember but it took a lot to do it but still 
let's say something happens in the future where that hardware piece of hardware is compromised in some form or fashion you just want to have your funds on multiple wallets and stored in multiple forms all right so just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that i thought that was pretty crazy next article is about the PBOC, which is saying that China has no launch timetable for the digital yuan now. No surprise to me, at least. Shouldn't be to you. The People's Bank of China has reiterated the digital yuan is still at the testing phase and there is no set timetable for the official launch. According to the publication, the Financial Times and China Finance conducted the rare interview on a range of subjects, including the digital yuan, the Chinese People's Political Conservative Conference, and the National People's Congress. Yi's comments come as the Chinese Central Bank can continue its internal piloting of the digital yuan or electronic payment project. The testing, which began in April, has seen the PBOC roll out the program in Shenzhen, Qingzhou, Chengdu, Xiongang, New Area, and Suzhou. According to Yi, the People's Bank of China is pursuing the digital yuan because of demand from the public for legal currency under the conditions of the digital economy. I, I, I'm going to have to call him bluff on that. Ain't nobody over there asking for more surveillance like come on now people this just doesn't make any sense it's just propaganda right we all know that what are your thoughts about the pboc and the digital yuan and do you see the us or maybe the uk beating china to the punch on their digital yuan uh, i don't i think they're way ahead of all the other countries but again i don't see this being something that is used externally it's probably a instrument to be used internally so nothing will really change i don't think uh, when it comes to foreign exchange relations with other countries, but you guys let me know I just want to give you a heads up that has been paused or at least I think delayed They're not saying it has been but they definitely don't have a date to launch it So we'll have to see what happens in the last article guys for today out of coin telegraph an early Bitcoin miner calls Craig Wright a fraud through his own addresses so Craig Wright's claim to thousands of Bitcoin addresses is shaking once again as 145 of them with Bitcoin from 2009 signed a message saying he is a fraud. The signed message by 145 wallets containing Bitcoin mined in his first year calls Craig Wright a liar and fraud. The message was published on May 25th with a list of 145 addresses and their corresponding signatures. This seemingly proves that the addresses do indeed belong to a person broadcasting the message. The message itself read, listen to this guys, Craig Wright is a liar and a fraud he doesn't have the keys used to sign this message the lightning network is a significant achievement however we need to continue to work on improving on-chain capacity unfortunately the solution is not to just change a constant in the code or to allow powerful participants to force out others and i think i, I agree with this i totally agree with this you know the lightning network and as you guys can see this person doesn't really agree with rolling out the lightning network and i think the one line of of, of this signature this signed message saying or alluding to to allow powerful participants to force out others pretty much alludes or references back to Lightning Network, in my opinion. That's what he's talking about. And that's what my concern with the Lightning Network is. It's going to actually make things more centralized in the Bitcoin network. It's just not the way to go, in my opinion. Right, they say on multiple occasions have failed to produce proof of ownership of the alleged fortune of Satoshi Nakamoto, who is believed to have mined more than 1 million Bitcoins. An easy way to do this is to sign a message with the cryptographic private key of the wallet in question. And as far as the Kleeman case, guys, that's in Florida, that case rests entirely on the assumption that Wright is Satoshi, which would entitle Ira Kleeman to half of those Bitcoins. Wright has already been accused of perjury and forging documents, and the early miners' activity put him in a tough spot. I'm going to be honest with you. I think there's a whole bunch of waste of time. I don't even think he has half a uh, billion in Bitcoin. I really don't think he has that money. So he won't even be able to give them the money if he loses the court case in Florida. I, I just don't understand why we still have to debate about whether or not Craig Wright is the creator and person behind the name Satoshi Nakamoto. That should be done and over with. Should have been years ago. Let me know your thoughts on that, though, in the comments below. That's pretty much it for today, ladies and gents. If you found this video informative, make sure you hit that like button, subscribe, share, and all that. Click that bell as well to receive more videos like this. And again, shout out to one of my YouTube subscribers, my premium YouTube members, going above and beyond to support the channel. For the song request, Don't Nobody Want None by Tech9. We out of here, people. Holla.